as soon as we can be creative, it's the, the best thing in life. So I take every occasion to be creative. Being pragmatic out of creativity, pragmatism and creativity are kind of the yin and the yang. The mess, it's not that it's important, it's, uh, it's part of the process, otherwise it's, uh, it's too organized and to organize is less natural. You have someone doing it, you know, very spontaneously sure of yourself, whether it's good or not, you like it or you don't, but the energy is, is real. And when the energy is real, it touches people. I never think when I do something, I need to sell. I'll do it with like a lot of excitement inside me, and out of this excitement, something real is coming, and it's the smell. And so the, the crowd starts to, to be bigger and bigger. Et je comprends pas pourquoi vous, vous, vous voulez les appeler que c'est moi. So I go by the name of Stéphane Ashpool. I'm from Paris, born and raised. I love my city. I love to travel, sport, jazz, the people, color, and emotion. They gave birth to me in this area called Pigal, where I spent all my childhood between two different worlds, the street world, where it was board, basketball, running in the street, and in my home, which was more uh, a condensed, uh, dreamy atmosphere, kind of an art world and poetic, like dance and artist. I spent my childhood with quite a, a very different gender of people, and that's what brought me uh, in my work to do like kind of uh, opposite stuff, which can be uh, basketball together with uh, I don't know red velvet, and like blend those two worlds together. It's just like a mix between my right hand and my left hand joined together to to bring some things. Pigal is in a border of, of two worlds, like so you have the north, which is considered uh, much more uh, popular, and down, which is more uh, the old Paris kind of bourgeois. So I, I would say that the boulevard, boulevard de Clichy, is really the bridge between those two worlds, and I am born right there, and that's what put me in a very good situation. I'm very, very lucky to be born there, so I'm not extreme on one point. Just right in the middle and going down, I can enjoy as much as I want a bourgeois lifestyle or a left side of Paris, which is known as Saint-Germain and all this. I feel I have two tones, two different colors, two different ways of thinking, very different attitude depending on the day. I navigate between two worlds and I've been doing this all the time. Something much more shy and atmospheric, deep inside my head and stuff. And then at the end, it's more like related to the street and I'm here like in the jungle, so you, no one's gonna eat me. And the other side is uh, much more gentle, like a, like a child. Rather I'm a child or a tiger. 
So you know the, the brand name at the beginning that was not a brand name like I'm born in this area Pigal. Uh, it's where I grew up, uh, walk around, be into my school, play ball, my friend live around, etc. I never knew I wanted to open a shop, but step by step I opened a shop selling like other brands and we needed to have a, a name for this shop. So that was quite spontaneous and I didn't uh, brainstorm too much. I was like, I'm from there. Pigal is a well-known name. It's clean, it's seven letter okay boom let's call it pigal but literally right after i opened up the shop i kind of knew i wanted to do my own product and i developed some headwear some hats one year after developed my own line and instead of let's say let's try to find another name just called it pigal for me, that was just a product into a shop, which was into this area, Pigal, and that turned into a brand. But for me, till now, it's not a brand. It's just an area where I'm from and I'm having a shop and where I create. It's kind of a, the meeting point, but it's, I don't see it as a brand as much as the others see it as a brand. I am the creator, I am the creative behind, or the people who help me down around, or the neighborhood himself are the essence of all this. But yeah, this is it. Pigal is a neighborhood that's been called, known as the Red Light District, and nothing much. You have many ways to do things. So you have like things that you prepared so much in your head. You have things that you do very spontaneously, that you have things that come from, uh, from the stomach. But soul himself is such a huge word, like when you really put yourself into something and that really come from your stomach, heart, and you just fight for it, that becomes soul. So you have so many angles to do things. You can do things, you just like think of it prepared or you have things that come naturally because you feed yourself a lot quite spontaneously. It's not like I'm sitting down in an office and like, so what I'm going to create and uh, have like kind of a, of a routine out of uh, creation. It's just come pretty naturally in an environment that you cannot prepare. And then out of this, you develop around, but the whole journey have to be quite spontaneous. That's what I think to put soul into something that comes from the heart and not too much from the head. The relation I had with fashion came from very, very far ago. Actually, uh, my dad w was working in Italy doing some knitwear. So he was kind of conceptualized design for the knit. At that time, my mom was a dancer, danced for this company called Peter Goss. Somehow my dad did the costume for them. But then he left into sculpture. He didn't like really match the industry. So that was kind of blurring to my mind. And then my mom was a dancer and, and suddenly herself went into the fashion world uh, indirectly because uh, a designer called Paco Rabanne asked her to help the girl to walk and have a better attitude and not like a bit because she was a dancer and showcase how to walk, be strong on a catwalk. And that was right before the period where fashion was a show, more near a show, a theater act, than like a fashion show that you see now of like uh, someone walking and like fast and going out. Me, I was just like a kid, kind of shy, watching people, all those dancers around me, and me at age of five or six, I fall in love with basketball. I was in this uh, very primary school and one basket on this tree. Everyone was running behind this soccer ball. And one day I just brought my little ball and I did this. I liked it the day after I did this. I liked it more third day. And then I've been to basketball and that built myself because I've been coaching, playing, and you know, being passionate by something, being on time, working hard on the subject that creates a personality. What I remember the most is, uh, is basketball and, uh, and dance. When I was 17, 18, we started to build up a kind of a group of friends called Pano Chocolat. So we were guys from the north of Paris. We were three, we were Paul, Ami and I. At that time I was like, I wanted to try to do some neat, but out of this, we build up a group and we start to do party. So the fashion part left over and that was more like this doing party outside, party in clubs 
and building a crowd and putting people together. And as we were at the bridge of Paris, we had like very different kind of elements coming, a different way of putting music and very diverse gender. Jumping from a hip hop track to an old French track that was not that popular 15 years ago. Now it's work more. Pano Chocolat put party together and out of this fashion was somewhere, basketball was somewhere and step by step like just putting elements together to make them uh, one. Back then we didn't have no social media. What I loved and always watched after was emotion, how to give emotion to elements. Me, I always been living in Paris my whole life. I'm in love with my city, you have no idea. I travel my city every day. I watch around me, I enjoy. It's not one place where I enjoy to go. I, I enjoy to go pretty much uh, everywhere. Like I'm, I'm enough open and receptive of, of different places. I like when uh, maybe it's a uh, messy or uh, organized mess when it's vibrant. I feel more comfortable when I don't like when it's too strict. So from a small uh, village in Italy, I go to research something, to Asia where I've been going a lot, or to Los Angeles for another reason. Like every time I go somewhere, I catch and try to get the best of where I am. When I'm in the nature, I'm going to go more near the nature and like develop skills around it. Every time I travel, coming back home, coming back home, enjoying the city even more. And you know, I'm never bored or over. It's not the place you are, it's how you feel yourself into the place. And I'm just in love, but madly in love by my city, yeah, big time. I was around the eccentric people uh, at a very young age, like dancer, like dressing crazy. So young, I was watching them. So I learned as a pretty young age to watch around and like catch, catch vibe, catch vibe. So I just catch its energy. But then when you have to throw an ID, you have to throw a song, you have to throw a show, you have to throw a, a movie, a sculpture, a painting, whatever, it things come and roll and it's a, like, it's a cycle, like it come and goes. When I don't think much, I just do it. When it comes naturally, maybe the soul, the essence that you have out of this is quite pure and natural. And I work to make them happen and then you feel it. I don't think I'm innovating in fashion design, to say the truth. It's been a cycle that repeats itself for ages, so you can have like technical aspects, new things coming, new fabric, new way of, uh, of blending fabric, new way of, uh, of uh, using yarn and stuff like this. No, me, it's more than just like the design himself. I always took like fashion as a medium. to tell story, put people together in a location, texture, color, sound, visual, faces, light, all this in one. So when I do a show, it's like to have like a final moment or subtle moment during this show that are the expression of the world I want to showcase. So as much as a photo or a painting, I just use fashion as a medium to tell stories. Of course, when I'm alone and I'm thinking, I'm, I'm passionate by the technique. But as I didn't do school and I don't feel myself as an extra talent as Alexander McQueen, for instance, I catch other things and I, I look after a guy like more Thierry Mugler, which was a kind of a pulling craft, but more story. And it was the whole package, just not just the clothes you put in on a rack and you're impressed by it's the whole object. And what I did working in this industry is to don't compromise myself doing like wholesale so I don't sell too many other stores, so I don't have to low cut down the budget because the button is uh, cost a lot or whatever, leather, not leather, this or the, I just like do it and I put it into my store. It's a small bakery business kind of uh, that I built so. I love creating true fashion. If I needed to do a product to be sold all around the globe, I'm not sure I'm, I'm the best at it. 
I'm happy I'm not in this industry, but it's just the way you present things. Like if you go to a big trade show of fashion, you're like this, but if you go see a small show or something good craft, you're gonna love it. So all those industries, depending where and how you show them are different. So the way I show fashion, it's the way I wanted to see it. So I love it. That's why I, I don't get along that much with a certain uh, world of fashion. Feel much more comfortable with people working with their hands. It's much more charming. I don't have to play too much the game as I don't sell in, in many stores, so I don't need extra promo and extra extra, so I don't need to do extra effort with the industry. People who follow my work like it, you guys welcome. If you don't, you hate, you don't have to come. If you act like uh, it's too much, like fashion can be, but uh, it's all right. Even if it's a party, it's a street party, the vibrations are nice, so you know, you remember that's the way maybe you want to meet your wife. Or then you come to one of the show and it's, uh, you feel some poetry or some stuff that can touch you somehow, somewhere, because everything is made quite spontaneously, not too prepared, as we said. And yet, time after time, uh, sharing this more and more, open up a shop, doing shows, doing parties, doing events, exhibitions, put people together without fear of uh, being in one box. Ah, okay, let's blend stuff that were not supposed to be blend that much at the beginning. And that became my trademark without knowing it. And that trademark became a job and this job became my life, kind of, you know. Things that coming uh, quite uh, instinctively. One day I end up uh, on this old parking lot next to my uh, school. That was like 12, 13 years ago. And this space was just like a small, dirty, dirty place. And out of this, we did, we transformed. So we're going to paint it. We're going to make it more charming. But nothing was too much tall. And suddenly I had a call from Nike say, oh, we have this guy, LeBron James, he's coming in Paris. How can we help? I need some paint. I, I want to do a nice backboard. OK, we're going to help you down. And suddenly we make it work. More kids from the neighborhood were coming. And step by step, a community like a, like a tree start to build up. We did the call several times. We put a new floor to don't disturb the neighbor, to protect the kids falling down. Years pass, more and more people, and now it became a proper tourist attraction. But it's still open seven on seven for the people. It's a wonderful place. It's the biggest achievement I could ever did, like build a sport facility into my neighborhood and make it real, open to people where like kids can meet up after school. But I just like to put people together around a, a good energy, colors, vibe. At the beginning, that place was gray. Then we did uh, with UA some painting and then put some color and then we kept it for a certain time. And then, and now it's nice because it became a trend. I see a lot of people around the club painting courts, taking care of uh, places which are dirty. And yeah, so change the color. It's just occasion since I start to create a new environment with new colors, graphic. We change once in a while. One time we change it uh, after a year and then we skipped it uh, two years. Then now it's three years, we might change it. I never knew that I had a leadership uh, state of mind into me. I didn't know. 17, 18, 19 years old, I start to affirm my character and think that I can put people together. I'm not ashamed to say that we did the best street party in Paris for about 15 years. No one can compete with us. At least in fashion, it's a process of six months between the ID and the final result that you're presenting in front of the people. It's a spark of something that I catch. I don't think it too much and I don't overexcite myself. I just do it kind of naturally. After a few days, things grow by themselves. At that moment, it's a literally a rain of IDs who's coming. And there I'm starting to craft the final ID. I just take the time I need, and sometimes it's difficult for my team because uh, they need to be more organized. So I'll try to adapt a little bit uh, to make the team always feed by something to do as much as we approach the show and let myself not block. So that's my creative process. It's an organized mess.
it's not easy to be you. I, I know so many creative, more talented than I, everything, but it's just like this. This force that you put into something, transform those ideas into something that can work. You don't depend on other, staying independent, relevant, dream big, but not too much neither, just in a way to advance in this world now, which is not the easiest one for the creative or any other job. I'm lucky enough to feel some proudness inside myself because I saw the journey, I can step back. So sometimes it's not just one moment or one memory that I have specifically. Maybe I have one strong memory when, when I won the Andam Prize. It's a, it's a prize that exists since 30 years called Andam, helping designer. Very good talented designer from Jeremy Scott, Martin Margiela, Gareth Pugh. Iris Van Erpen won this prize, so being next to them as a name is pleasant. And the joy I, I had was very, very special. But I still enjoy the small joy that I ha I'm having that can come uh, anytime. Life is not that long and you need to use the energy as much as you can to do and don't repeat yourself and don't get too much into a routine. When you have a very clean cake or a cake a bit burned, that doesn't mean the cake who's a bit burned is less good. Like the mom left it maybe three minutes much, but it's, it's real. This realness I'm doing is like a, you allowed yourself to do mistake. It's not like all into a box. Everything is a, is a flow. It's like a song, like it's continuing. It's a, not too much break. It's more like a DJ set my life than a, a album that done, I hope so. So we just keep rolling, we keep pushing. I do a solid career. I know what I'm doing. Yeah, I did the best I could, that's for sure. But the journey is longer. Huh?